Greetings, welcome to Fargo FX. It's obviously been a very long while since we did a video. Uh, I've been thinking about doing a video kind of like this for probably at least a few months. There hasn't really been a catalyst for it in the news, uh, but there is now. <laughs> if, you, uh, if you've been paying any attention at all, you know that uh, right now there is a new virus previously undiscovered in human population. Some concern about that becoming a pandemic. Whether or not that actually happens remains to be seen. Uh, there's a lot of uh, discussion about specific things you could do to prevent yourself from exposure. Uh, a lot of discussion has been had around these masks. Uh, this happens to be an old, uh, uh, this is a Harbor Freight uh, N95. I think it's an N95 mask. Uh, I would not necessarily consider this to be of the quality that uh, that you're that you're seeing uh, physicians use and so on. Um, I'll talk about this uh, in a minute. Okay, so the idea here is I think it was originally I was going to call it the biohazard bug out challenge or something like that, and uh, kind of call on other people to to do the same. Show me you know what what you have going on, and if any of you want to do that, you go ahead. Uh, you know what might you include in a bug out bag that wasn't maybe just hey. Uh, the social order is breaking down and uh, or maybe there's a natural disaster and I know gas at the gas station and I might need to go on foot and what do I take, you know, the old get home bag idea. Um, this isn't exactly that. This is much more of a tailored specifically to some type of biological hazard. And uh, I was going to make it more general, but I think uh, because of the timing of this video, I think it's good uh, for us to have this discussion. Uh, because the best way probably to avoid panic and avoid fear, um, well, there's a couple of ways. One, you could just ignore the news, because uh, as it turns out, most things kind of blow over. Um, but another way is to be prepared, because if you're prepared for something before it happens, then, of course, you, um, uh, you experience much less fear and concern, because you're ready for it. Okay, so with that said, I am going to touch on this briefly and then we'll move on to a couple of other things. Um, there were a lot of people wearing masks and that was one of the early recommendations is, hey, if you get a mask that's designed to filter out a certain size of particles, um, that could be an effective barrier. Um, let's just say it's, it's of questionable value. Uh, one of the significant things that a mask can do for you is if you're wearing a mask, you are much less likely to touch your nose or mouth. Okay. So in terms of preventing yourself from getting the illness, it does serve that function that you're not, maybe you're touching a surface and it has some bacteria or some virus on it, depends on, in this case, we're dealing with a virus. Um, and you don't wanna bring that up to your nose, eyes, mouth. Uh, if you have a mask on, you're less likely to actually bring it to your nose or your mouth. Another role that it plays is if you do happen to be sick, because remember, this is, a, this is an illness that seems to have a wide range of different uh, kind of levels of, of symptoms from some people who are perhaps not even symptomatic at all or, or barely symptomatic uh, all the way out to people who have pneumonia. And so if you do happen to have the sickness, even if you're not aware that you have it, <clears throat> it may not be a bad idea to wear a mask like this because you're less likely to cough and expel particles out there. So these aren't completely without value, um, but I think their value can be overstated. I'm not going to try to talk you out of it. Um, the other thing, and I learned about this fairly recently, a, a mask that protects your eyes. You know, it has side guards that come around. This type here actually almost forms a seal against your head, okay? So if you have your eyes completely covered uh, and you have this to cover your nose and mouth, you are much less likely to give this virus to somebody else, okay? And because you are protecting, you're blocking yourself from touching your mouth, touching your nose, and touching your eyes, uh, there's also a really good chance that you can substantially reduce the likelihood uh, that you are going to get this virus. But that's not all. There are other things we got to do. Um, uh, you know, here we have a, uh, everybody knows hand sanitizer. Uh, this just happens to be a keychain variety. Um, there's lots of different types of hand sanitizer out there. Make sure you have enough. If you're packing a bag, you know, a lot is going to depend on how, is this a bag you're going to keep in your trunk? Is it a bag you're going to keep somewhere in your house? Uh, or maybe it's just going to be a pack that you have on your back that you bring with you to work or whatever. Um, that will have some effect on the, the items that you choose to carry and how large those items are. Regular hand washing is very good. If, if you have access to water and can wash your hands, you may not always be able to do that. If not, definitely carry some hand sanitizer with you. A lot of these things may be applicable specifically to uh, this latest uh, virus, uh, but they also apply in many other situations. M much of what you're going to see here is uh, 
uh, it's the same type of thing that would prevent against various types of flu and maybe also some bacterial infections and some other things. So uh, let's see what else. Oh yes, I wanted to get this involved because as, a, as one who does a lot of metal work, I happen to have a, a mask that would probably be much more effective than these two things put together. Um, I have an actual mask that's designed, and you can screw in different filters here, but it's designed to really filter out all the way down to tiny particles and even vapors, depending on what type of cartridges you use. And so that'll be a key. If you uh, order a mask like this, make sure to order cartridges that are designed for filtering out whatever it is you're trying to filter. Uh, so this this has a nice big uh, eye shield, um, and it and it's rubberized around here, and it's you know you can tighten it down, and really, I mean I can create a really good seal around my nose, my mouth, my eyes uh, in an event like this. And as far as I know, these types of things are not uh, in short supply right now. So if you go and order, they cost a little more. I forget how much I paid for this one, but you could probably find a pretty decent one for around fifty dollars um, maybe plus the cartridges might have to do a little research to find exactly what cartridge to use um, to get the best you know maximum protection um, but that's something to think about uh, maybe instead of using these cheap disposable kind especially if you think that you're going to be in a biological threat environment and that's going to last for some time because remember this isn't only about hey this one particular virus this is a uh, part of a broader kit, a broader strategy to be prepared, uh, kind of no matter what happens. You know, I have relatives who lived in a place where there was a chemical spill, and, you know, having something like this could have been very, very useful, okay? So it's not just, these aren't just such outlandish, you know, doomsday kind of scenarios. I, I know people who have had experiences where they could very much have used something like this to protect themselves. So I've got a bag up here. I'm going <clears> to <throat> put some of these things in. Uh, this bag is kind of a you know, this wouldn't be a backpack style bag. This is more of a, uh, maybe something you'd keep in the trunk or keep in a locker at work. Um, it's, it's big enough that I can throw a few things in there and, and even have some extra uh, items if I want to, um, as long as I keep it relatively light so it's something I can throw over my shoulder. Um, but but a, depending on the, the purpose for which I'm packing a bag, uh, depending on the threat environment and so on, I might want to pack things differently. Uh, but that is a nice reason to have a little bit larger bag that you have a little bit more versatility uh, for putting a variety of things in there. Uh, another thing that I would probably always include in just about any kind of get home bag, bug out bag, whatever you want to call it, is some type of first aid kit. Now this is a really, really small one here. I think I maybe need to restock this one a little bit. It's got some band-aids in it. You know, this type of thing will come with you know, band-aids and maybe some, uh, well, here's some antibacterial ointment. You know, a lot of times you'll have a, you know, this happens to be sunscreen lotion, but same kind of concept there, okay? Um, that it would come in a little container like this and you might tear it open to be a one-time use um, for applying to a cut or a gash that was, that was uh, pretty bad, you know? Um, you can purchase uh, these things, you can buy them at the store, you can buy them online. Um, you know, Amazon has a ton of different ones, different sizes. Um, there's military surplus ones, whatever. Uh, what I would say is uh, do a little bit of research and again, try to match your first aid kit or your little med kit, try to match it to the threat that you anticipate facing. You know, some will come with tourniquet. Uh, this obviously doesn't have that; it's a much smaller kit. But I just bought it as an example. You can go, you could go smaller than this, you know, uh, or you could go larger, depending again on what you think you are going to need. Doesn't hurt to have band aids. Um, never hurts to have whatever antibiotic you can get your hands on. Legally speaking, <laughs> whatever antibiotic you can get your hands on, uh, it's not going to hurt. And of course, this is common over the counter. Uh, Neosporin is a good brand, but any of the triple antibiotic ointments, and and those are for that's not for like tetanus and stuff, but that's for you get a cut and you want it to heal quickly. Uh, you don't want to have some cut or gash that's getting in the way of you doing the other things you need to do. Put something on it that's gonna that's gonna seal it, make it safe, and then um, and then not worry about it. Also, a knife. Uh, knives are are valuable for any number of reasons. Uh, this is a Kershaw, uh, I think Kershaw. In in, in terms of a blade that. Um, it's a very high quality knife at a relatively low price. Um, stepping it up a little, um, and this again will depend a lot on what kind of environment you see yourself in. Uh, this of course is a Glock, uh, uh, like military Glock knife. Heavy, uh, but also well built. 
strong and well-built. It's not a beautiful knife. It's not really a collector's piece. It's very utilitarian. Uh, but it's such a thick blade that, that it really, it could be used for a lot of things. Uh, you could use it for batoning, uh, to split wood. You could use it for digging. I wouldn't be inclined to use a knife that was this heavy in a kit that I was planning to be very lightweight. Maybe something I was just going to slip on my back and go um, and would occupy a relatively small space. But again, in a uh, you know in, in a in a big bag that I doesn't matter if it winds up weighing 15 or 20 pounds by the time I'm done. A lot of that's going to be personal choice. Uh, water always bring water. A number of different reasons to bring water. And actually, I have here's another. Okay, uh, eye wash is a good thing to have with you. Water can do the same. Uh, can do the same function. Uh, obviously, water helps you hydrate. If you have any burns, chemical burns, anything like that, obviously you can use water um, as, as a way to mitigate. Uh, but also you can drink it, <laughs> right? But a bottle like this uh, gets you through a, what would otherwise be a really, really miserable few hours. If you've got a couple of bottles like this, uh, just to keep you hydrated, it's going to make a big difference. Yeah, you're not going to die from you know 24 hours without water in most situations. Um, but you're going to be a lot happier if you do have some water. And you never know when you're 24 hours is going to wind up being 48 or 72. So uh, when it comes to having a bottle of water, I might have, uh, again, there's some size and weight limitations to consider, but probably, I don't know, probably at least two bottles. Uh, if you can stretch that to four, uh, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be ahead of the game. And then having something like this, um, an eye wash. Hey, how many different times and how many different ways has this been the only thing that I've needed when I was in a given situation? I had something in my eye. I didn't need to have a bug out bag for biological anything, but I got something in my eye and I was like, man, I need to get this out of my eye. This is a large-ish bottle for what you might need. But again, if you're in a biological or chemical threat type of environment, uh, it's not a bad idea to have more than you think you might need. So having something like that can be, uh, can be a help. Uh, when we think about uh, personal defense, you know, if you wind up in a situation where maybe you're up against some uh, whatever, wild animals, dogs, uh, angry people, whatever it might be, uh, having a good trusted brand of either pepper spray or uh, gel or some other type of a, a chemical irritant or whatever, whatever's legal where you are, uh, not a bad idea. I would much rather, if I come face to face with an angry dog or something, I would much rather defend myself with something like this than have to you know, shoot it or, or worse yet, have to fight it with my bare hands, right? Um, so having something to defend yourself with is better than nothing. Uh, I think that having some pepper spray, pepper gel on hand, uh, yeah, it's going to have limited effectiveness depending on the threat that you're facing. Definitely a whole lot better than nothing. Uh, another thing to consider is electricity. If you want to be able to use your cell phone in whatever emergency it is that you face, uh, what happens if the battery goes dead, uh, here's an example. I mean, you can buy these things for probably 10 bucks off of, uh, off of Amazon or a lot of times you can just find them in places 10, 12, 15 bucks. You can get a decent solar charger. They may take a little while to charge up, uh, but they often have clips that just, you know, you can clip this thing right onto your pack and then let it ride in the sun or clip it onto your shoulder or whatever and let it ride out in the sun. And while you're walking, uh, you know, put it up on the dash of your car or whatever, and it'll charge up. And usually they carry about enough charge to uh, to recharge a cell phone, sometimes a little more. There's a lot of different brands, some bigger, some smaller. Some of them are designed for uh, recharging laptop computers and tablets and all sorts of things. So having something like this doesn't cost a lot of money, gives you a little extra peace of mind if you're going to be relying on any kind of electronics. Uh, I didn't cover this before, but uh, again, this kind of goes along with the hand sanitizer. Uh, you may want to be able to sanitize surfaces before you use them. Uh, another thing that I wanted to include, but I just it wasn't handy for this. But uh, everybody knows how to get them. Get some rubber gloves, some kind that are you know good for rated for various chemicals, and, and a thicker rubber glove, something that's not going to tear very easily. Um, and then just some sanitizing wipes, um, and look for one that specifically says it kills coronavirus. Might as well. This one does. One of the most common ways that we get viruses or bacteria is by touching something and then putting our hands to our face, either rubbing our eyes, rubbing our nose. Um, you know, picking up a food item, putting something in our mouth, and we're, we're actually bringing the bacteria to our face. Uh, we're bringing the virus to our face, uh, and that's how it gains entry into the body. So you have something like this, wipe down doorknobs with it, wipe your fingers with it, throw it away, go straight through the door. Uh, better yet, have some rubber gloves you've put on, some good tough 
thick uh, rubber gloves that are designed to handle chemicals. And as you go through doorways, keep using that stuff. Do not touch your face. And when you get somewhere safe, um, remove those gloves, you know, inside out, right? So you start with the back and you pull them off inside out, discard them, and then maybe use something like this, even though it's, it's harsh on your skin. I'm not recommending using this a lot, uh, but maybe use it uh, uh, for short periods of time. And if you are in a place that you are hoping to keep uh, as a safe environment, okay, so you've made it to where you're gonna go, Use something like this to wipe down the surfaces inside of that place. Desktops, uh, guardrails, obviously doorknobs, any place that other people touch that you're going to touch, uh, wipe down thoroughly with some uh, with some wipes. And of course, you could also carry a thing of bleach and a spray bottle and all this other stuff. Uh, not necessarily a bad idea, but this is compact, has all the stuff you need right there, ready to go, resealable. Uh, might as well have something like that. And as I mentioned before, having some way to start a fire, I mean, just any type of survival kit, whether it's, you know, obviously the intended purpose of this is not for me to go off into the woods someplace and, and live for extended periods of time. Uh, but having a way to start a fire certainly doesn't hurt. So, and then last but not least, you're going to want a flashlight uh, because you never know when it's going to wind up dark <clears throat> where you are. Now, I couldn't find a flashlight right away for... Uh, for this video, but I found one of my wife's. Um, it's kind of got something funny attached to it. I'm not sure if you can see that there. It's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, she told me this is like an extra dangerous flashlight for some reason. I don't know. Um, but anyway, I just I, she said to stay away from this little, uh, little little thing hanging down here. So I just stay away from that. Um, but but you can run the uh, see there a little chink on and off right there just like that. Uh, so get a good flashlight. Make sure you got some backup batteries for it. So. Um, and again, size and weight are a consideration, but when you have a, um, you know, when you have something like a, a bag that's this size, I mean, all together, throwing everything in there, uh, plus a couple of rubber gloves and maybe a couple of granola bars, I'm probably still not over 10 pounds with this thing. So, uh, so I, I think we did pretty good. Uh, so that's, I guess that's about it for now. Uh, I might do uh, an upgraded version of this at some point. I would also welcome any discussion about it and uh, any discussion about what's kind of what's been going on with this uh, whole situation with the coronavirus in China and uh, seems to be kind of, you know, slipping out into the rest of the world too. Uh, what do you guys think? What have you heard? I know there's a lot of rumors out there. I tend to not put much stock in rumors that I read on the internet, uh, but I, you know, speculate. So uh, I would welcome you absolutely to join in the discussion below. And if anybody, like I said at the beginning, if anybody has a video response that they'd like to put out, uh, something of that nature, uh, by all means, go ahead. Um, and again, this is pretty rudimentary, basic, you know, um, but, it's, but it's a start. And that's one of the important things, I think, is to um, start where you are, start with what you have, and uh, make a point of, of doing little things, taking little steps to make yourself a little bit safer. One of the ones that everybody always talks about, and it's true, wash your hands. Wash your hands, don't touch your face. So thanks for watching. Uh, like I said, uh, probably more to come. Uh, some aspects of uh, you know real biological threats is gonna go way beyond what we've covered here. Uh, but this is just a little bit of uh, uh, begin where you are with what you can easily get and, uh, and work your way up. So thanks for joining me, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.